Hey guys, Dr. Davlin, board certified laser dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about what you can do for your acne, as in treat acne before seeing a dermatologist. These are, pra I think they're practical hints, um, and certainly when I used to do general dermatology, I do appreciate patients try this first. And the reason being is that most dermatologists should actually acknowledge, I guess, more banal treatments before going for the medical treatments. So here we go. First thing you should do is actually consider your cleansers, yeah? The cleansers should be mild, they should be non-comedogenic, in other words, no acne forming. And things like Cetaphil can work really well. Abagi also makes a good range. The other thing to try is salicylic acid. So salicylic acid is a wash, so you can buy a 2% salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is good because, number one, it's a keratolytic, so it actually exfoliates the top part of your skin. Salicylic acid is also concentrated in the pilosebaceous glands, and what happens is that that can actually decrease sebum production and is also anti-inflammatory. So salicylic acid wash, such as, um, for example, Neutrogena makes a good wash, uh, look for the orange one and certainly use that once or twice a day. Caution with this, if you have very dry sensitive skin, just use it once a day and push up from there. So as a guide, 2% salicylic acid wash can do wonders. Okay, what else can you try? Um, so certainly benzyl peroxide or BPO. Benzyl peroxide is an, a, it, it's an oxidizing agent. So unlike antibiotics, there is no resistance for benzyl peroxide. So, as you know, the most famous benzyl peroxide brand is actually Proactive. So you're, you're paying premium for, I guess, the branding, but the actual active ingredients you can buy from Benzac AC, for example. You can buy that as a wash with a 5%, or you can go for two, two and a half percent. And a lot of, I guess, over-the-counter preparations uh, actually have benzyl peroxide. So once again, you're looking at 2% all the way up to 5%. And caution with this, so if you have dry, sensitive skin, leave it on your face for maybe 30 seconds, wash off. If you can tolerate that, increase from there. So that's the second hint is benzyl peroxide. Thirdly, obviously, is um, vitamin A. So as dermatologists, we use prescription vitamin A, but I know in the US you can even get now adapalene, right, which is a second generation retinoid. So we can start first with um, retinol. So remember with retinol, that gets converted uh, to retinoic acid, and retinoic acid is the actives. So more on how to use vitamin A's in this card above. But let's go through how to actually start with vitamin A's. So you're looking at retinol between one to 5%, acknowledging that only a certain portion gets converted and is not as good as medically prescribed retinoids. So if you can tolerate retinol, certainly you can graduate to something like adapalene, right, which is your um, different. From there, you can actually go up to what's known as a third generation retinoid, such as tazarotene. So retinoids work in four ways. The most important way is that it normalizes the pilosebaceous gland. In other words, the keratinization of the pilosebaceous unit or the oil gland. So what it does, is it decreases the amount of, oil, of cells, abnormal cells, which are shedding and causing a blockage in the oil gland. So that's the first way and that's most important. Secondly, it can decrease sebum production. So it can decrease oil production within the gland itself. Thirdly, it can decrease inflammation. And fourth, um, it can actually help kill P. acnes, which is the bacteria forming in the oil gland um, after it's clogged up. And that's the bacteria implicated in acne. So that brings me to how to kill bacteria. So we talked about benzyl peroxide. We can also use, um, I guess, natural methods. So as you know, tea tree oil can help. So with tea tree oil, there's a caution with that. So obviously if you have dry, irritated, sensitive skin, use less, use a moisturizer first, and then tea tree oil, okay? So that, that can help. It's a natural remedy, and it's been proven in scientific papers, okay? The next thing I'll talk about is light. So if you have ever noticed, if you go to the beach, your acne improves, your back acne improves, your chest acne improves. Why is that? Because light can actually kill P. acnes. Now, it is a bit of a, I guess, a balancing act because if you have too much light, especially in patients who are like my skin color, type three, type four, you can have what's known as post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So certainly for type one, type two skin, if you're using sensible light, so you maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes um, per day. Don't get sunburned and do it in moderation. You can see that that can actually help improve acne. So caution with light. Um, as dermatologists, we use proper LEDs. So we actually use um, a, a spectrum such as 430 nanometers, which is blue light, or 
630 odd nanometers, which is red light. Often we combine red and blue, or blue and red, and we get a better outcome compared to one. But obviously, the caution is that if you have pale skin, last thing you want to do is get sunburn. Okay, so in moderation, and I just think about it. Okay, guys, diet. Um, this is my favorite because, um, you know, as a junior dermatologist 15 years ago, you know, there was very little in regards to diet. Now there's a lot more studies, yeah? And the studies are pretty robust. I do believe that 80% of acne can be, uh, I guess, improved with diet. And certainly by eating sensibly uh, and eating less refined foods. So you want, what you want is unrefined foods, you know? Your, uh, your greens, your meats, your vegetables, uh, and cut, less, cut down less on the things like sugars, for example, because we, as you know, when you take sugary foods, uh, it can flare up your acne. And research has also shown that milk, so dairy products can make acne worse. So yes, I know soy doesn't taste as good, but if you actually flare up with, um, with dairy products, certainly by watching your diet, cutting down your um, dairy, replacing that, it can help your acne, okay? These are little hints that you can try before seeing a dermatologist. So there's a couple of exceptions to the rule. Um, when we talk about acne in females, it's often hormone mediated, yeah? So we've got the adult female jawline hormonal acne, which I keep going on about, which is super common. Um, those often don't do well with, um, with intervention, such as uh, topicals. They often do um, better with things like um, anti-hormone medications and, and certainly vitamin A orally. So if you're struggling with that, certainly see a medical dermatologist for some help. Okay. The other thing I talk about are peels, so chemical peels. We talk about salicylic acid, which is a beta hydroxy acid peel. If you have blackhead and whitehead acnes, there are certain types of peels that work better. For example, we talked about beta hydroxy acids, but you can use alpha hydroxy acids, so glycolic acid. That only works well for, I guess, um, we're talking about blackhead acne. So start with something like a Neostrata AHA10. If you can tolerate that, go to an AHA15. If you can tolerate that, you can add that to your um, uh, retinol or retinoid program. So you might want to do something like your chemical peel as a cream in the morning and something like a retinol in the evening. So that's another hint in regards to chemical peels. As dermatologists, we also higher strength peels. So salicylic acid, we might start something like 15%, uh, go up to 20, 25%, and all the way up to 30%. Not recommended for at-home use, but certainly when we talk about peels, the 2% salicylic acid or an alpha hydroxy acid, or even the lactic acid at home can actually benefit. Okay guys, um, thanks for that. I hope you enjoyed that really short segment on how to treat acne prior to seeing a dermatologist. When you go see a dermatologist, if you can actually put your hand on your heart and say, look, I've done all of these, you know, I guess at home OTC treatments, um, you're in a much better position because your dermatologist would, would then negotiate treatments with you, which include things like vitamin A orally, vitamin A topically, um, a short course of antibiotics, and certainly um, other physical therapies, whether it be BBL, IPL, or as I discussed, light-based therapies. Guys, I hope you liked the video. Please share, subscribe, and comment. I'll see you same time, same place next week. Bye for now.